Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is another Monday Top 5, and today we are going to consider the top five reasons you might use elementary OS as your distro. So if you follow my channel enough, you know I'm not a huge fan of elementary OS, but I'm also not a person that sits there and says, everyone's got to use Mint, you know, because there's some people that don't agree with the philosophy of Mint. There's some people that just don't like the look of it. That's okay. And so I want to really want to highlight other things, even things that I disagree with necessarily. Um, but elementary OS, as much as I have criticized it uh, a fair amount, it is a good OS. Um, I find that it doesn't work very well on a lot of my hardware. Um, it seems to be working pretty well today, so hopefully we can uh, get through this without any bugs. And I'm just fine about 50% of the time. Um, the hardware uh, just doesn't work quite as well. Uh, but, you know, honestly, that is something that is is certainly um, to be expected from an operating system that is so new and so ground up. I mean, these guys have put together an entire desktop environment and Pantheon, uh, cleaned up the entire code base. They're not grabbing resources that already exist from other places uh, like several distros do. And for that, um, there's a whole lot of great credibility because of that. And so, you know, while it may not be quite as mature as Mint, we have to remember that Mint has been doing this for a long, 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 long time, and they're borrowing from Ubuntu's repositories. So um, we're going to get into the reasons why you might consider elementary OS. Of course, uh, their website is at uh, elementary dot io is their their website you can get more information here including down here um they you do not have to pay uh it i would highly recommend you that if you are uh if you are going to use this as a distro you might give them a donation um but if you are just testing this out you can just put zero in over here and just hit the download button and then you have a basic straight download or you have a torrent download over here uh, so you have a lot of a lot of these here. Of course, their website's just kind of built out, which has a lot of information. So you can check out um, check out the uh, the website and see more information uh, about it. So uh, with that being said, what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and jump over there as soon as I find my scene set up. There we are. And we're going to transition over. So here is elementary. I have the system settings open. Um, so you can see that the interface here, it is, um, they don't claim to specifically do it, but, but they are trying to mimic a lot of what Mac looks like. Um, it has a lot of these, these, you know, a lot of the really clean interfaces and a lot of the color schemes that you will find on, on a Mac OS X. Um, other things, um, I thought I could right click and change the desktop background. You can do that in the settings. Um, but what we're going to talk about here uh, today is the top five reasons you would consider elementary OS. So the first reason is, uh, and this is one of those things that, that can at times um, bother some of the Linux users, that it's really not easy to customize. Um, but those of us that know how to use Linux and try to customize things, we can sometimes break parts of it. The great news is, though, and a reason you'd want to use it, is that is, for a new user coming to Linux, it is almost impossible to break this thing. Um, a person that doesn't necessarily know what a terminal is or how to get to it, you don't have to interact with the terminal on this system. It's out of the box. Everything that is easily available from the GUI will not break the system. And so it is a system that if you're not trying to do anything, if you're trying to install it and use it, you will not break this. And so if you are looking for a distro for a parent, uh, or I'd say parent, but you know maybe anybody who's not a computer savvy person and the task comes to you to help them with all their computer struggles, this could be a logical choice because they're not going to break it. It's not like you know uh, Ubuntu or even Mint where the terminal buttons are there and somebody can get in there and mess around in there and accidentally delete the root directory. You know, <laughs> um, you're not going to do that very easily on elementary. Is it possible? Yep. Is it likely? Nope. And so stability um, and protect, protection from new users is your first thing there. And it occurred to me that 
I need to move my picture slightly around just because of the banners I'm going to put in in post-production there are going to cover my picture. All right. Um, so the second thing about the operating system, and this is if you follow me enough, you know that I will put this under both categories, a positive and a negative, depending on your particular viewpoint of it. Um, it, it does not feel bloated. So if you come up in the application center, this is all you get. Um, there is a n not a lot of excess tools. You don't have a disk manager. You don't have USB writers. You don't have a lot of those other tools that exist out there uh, that you would find on several other places. You just don't have them. Um, to some people, again, that is a negative. I like my operating system to have all of those, but there is a very, very good argument that you don't necessarily want those, particularly that new user who's not as familiar with Linux um, and they just need to have a good distro that works out of the box that they can get online, check their email. You don't want all those extra tools. And so I'm listing this for the purpose of this video. That is number two reason is it is not full of excess software you do not need. So we have here a basic integrated music app. We have a, um, a web browser here. We have a, a calculator calendar. Um, the downside I'm seeing right here is there's not any word processor installed. But if you go into the App Center, you should be able to install that uh, pretty easily. Uh, and that brings us to my third major uh, advantage here of using uh, Elementary is that the software repositories are clean. Okay, and that is one of the disadvantages you find on Ubuntu is Ubuntu has been around for so long that there are stuff in there that are broken. There are things in there that don't have dependencies. There's things in there that, that just break. For example, on my Ubuntu Mate computer, I needed something to manage my addresses. Well, there's two major apps out there for managing your, your address books and your contacts and things. Those are K Address Book, which I have on my KDE computer behind me, or you have your GNOME Contacts. Um, of course, this here, I think, has its own contact manager already in it. Um, let's see. And I know I actually installed one as well, just for the purposes of testing this out. Where's it at? I thought I installed something. Okay. Well, we'll look at that in a minute. But regardless, um, on my Ubuntu Mate, I went into the software repository and I looked for a place to install contacts. Okay. And what showed up in there, you'll see here that there's the, there is the GNOME contacts and there is the, um, the contacts uh, address book that is here. I'm guessing that this contacts address book that is here is going to be the, uh, the one that probably more closely matches this look. But you'll see that there's two different contact books. In Ubuntu Mate, I also had two different contact books, one of those being this GNOME Contacts, and it doesn't work out of the box on Ubuntu Mate for some reason. And so I just installed that. That didn't work. So I just installed K Address Book, which works. And that's why I use K Address Book on Ubuntu Mate. Now here in, uh, here in elementary is they have gotten rid of everything in the repositories that do, does not work. And so you're going to have a clean repository. There's not nearly as much software. It's, it's kind of like if you remember when Microsoft went towards the Windows store with the Windows phone, we have a third of the apps is the Apple store. Yeah, no, no, no. You have, t you have a small fraction of them. Most of what you call your apps is the same Chinese company pushed out 37 copies of the exact same thing with a different skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we get going on here. While looking at the root, how many uh, software packages are available, Ubuntu looks like it's so many more content, um, so many more software packages. The reason is there are a lot of software packages in Ubuntu that are broken. You will not encounter that problem in elementary because everything is built ground up. And so that is a major advantage for using elementary OS. Um, so, of course, I just installed the contacts. I think what's going on and the reason why it's not showing up, let's see, it's something, this, the, this contacts is showing up. The GNOME contacts I also installed. It's not showing up my, in my uh, application menu. That frequently happens on many di Linux distros. If I log out and log back in, it should show up. So here you can see that we have a nice address book uh, that matches. I can import from Google. Um, let's see what else we have. So here's a place where I can add new contacts. Um, let's see. Um, number four reason is if you have already noticed uh, looking at this, the interface on this is very clean. 
So we don't have a lot of extra things. And again, it, they say openly in places they're not necessarily trying to duplicate the Mac, but it looks like the layouts they sort of are. Um, not entirely, but they sort of are. Um, but everything is very nice, very clean. There's not a lot of excess stuff floating around. And so, you know, the interface of this, this OS, it is completely fresh. It is completely clean. Um, it has some elements that seem close to GNOME, which I believe this is based on loosely. It is called Pantheon is the desktop environment. But it is very clean. It is, um, it is uh, just a, a nice looking system. A lot of people really like the way this looks. And so that is, is a good advantage. Um, of course, you, you can't customize it as much as you can other distros, but really how much do we customize our computers anyway? We might like to customize, well, I, can, I, I shouldn't say we don't like to customize them. I customize my computers. I just don't customize them a lot. Yeah, I get it the way I like it and then I stick with it. All right, and the number five thing that I'm pulling out of Elementary OS as a very good reason to consider using it is out of the box, Elementary OS has some wonderful parental controls. Now, I do not have an extra user set up. Um, so if I come in here and create a new user, why don't I go ahead and uh, to do this, I need to unlock by entering my password. And now that we are unlocked, I should be able to add a new user. Um, so you can see here that I can add a standard or an administrative user. So if you have if you have a family computer and you want to have a good system that your kids have their own account, you have your own account, set them up as a standard user, then they can't do administrative things. Um, say this is the kiddo account and we're just going to give it the bad password of kiddo. Oh, really? Let's see if it'll... Okay. Hopefully it lets me do that. Good. So it allows me to do that. So now that I have my other pat, my other user account there, I can come into parental controls and I can enable parental controls over here. Um, I can limit the computer use. Oh, I need to unlock first. Let's say that should be working. All right. So now I can enable the parental controls over here. This will allow me to limit the, the computer usage so I can limit it between certain times of the day. So maybe we want to allow them to use it between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. is the only time we want them to be able to use it. Okay. So, and then week, weekdays, you know, weekends, weekdays, you could do any time here as well. Um, so you can set this up. Um, under your internet, you can add certain URLs that will, this will enable them to block. So if you don't want them on Facebook, you know, you can, you can enter in things like this. And then there's applications. Um, you can enable applications and then um, you can allow access with admin, which means that if, if you want the kid to be able to use it, you, they just need an administrative password. So you can see that if you can download certain applications on here, you can um, prevent them from using certain applications. So we're being mean. We don't want to let them listen to music or use email, right? Or you might just not let them use email for whatever other reason, but now you can actually lock those down so now when we log out we log in under kiddo we can only log in uh, only use the internet during those certain periods of time we can only use the computer during those certain periods of time and so adding the built-in parental controls without having to install or configure any other software is a major win for why a person might want to consider using elementary OS so those are my top five reasons why you might consider elementary OS as your distro and if you happen to have your own reasons why you might consider elementary OS, list those down below in the comments. And uh, if you would like to uh, keep up to date with what we're doing here on the channel, you can subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can find us at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there will be a link to that below. And you can also help support us by utilizing the Amazon affiliate link in the comments. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.